This is the most serious challenge to Togo's political order in nearly 15 years. Hundreds of thousands of demonstrators across the country have formed a united political opposition. They're all demanding new term limits for the office of the president and for President Four Nasingbe to step down. I haven't known another president other than him and his father. The Togolese people want to know another president. We're tired. Nasingbe rose to power in 2005 following the death of his father, who ruled Togo for more than 30 years. Togo is firmly in his family's grip, and there's little sign he'll let go without a fight. There is this intimidation, this brutal arrival of vans full of security forces who come to intimidate a political leader. The intimidation doesn't stop there. Security forces have been accused of attacking protesters and internet access had been cut until today. The opposition calls it an attempt to suppress more protests. But there's little sign the government's strategy is succeeding and growing fear that this peaceful opposition could soon turn violent. Togo stands alone in West Africa. It's the only nation in the region that doesn't have presidential term limits. Togo did briefly, but they were scrapped by President Nsingbe's late father in 2002. Under mounting pressure, Nsingbe has offered to bring those limits back. But the opposition is skeptical. They fear any new constitutional reforms could see him stay in power until 2030. The opposition has been clear. They want the president out of office now. Nisingbe is also facing pressure from regional allies and the international community, all calling on him to avoid plunging his nation deeper into crisis. Basil Rahan, The Newsmakers. Well, joining me now from West Palm Beach, Florida, is Walali Alija. He's the operations director for the Togolese Civil League, a pro-democracy organization of Togolese citizens living abroad. In London, we have Agnes Gitau. She's the director at GBS Africa, a political advisory group. And in Cape Town, Francois Conradi, he's the head of research in NKC African Economics. Let me start with you, Agnes, by quoting what the United Nations uh, Special Envoy for West Africa and the Sahel had to say. He urged Togo to respond to people's legitimate expectations. He said, I remain convinced that all parties want to move forward on the reforms in order to reach a consensus to respond to the legitimate expectations of the Togolese people. Tell me what those legitimate expectations are, Agnes. So the expectations of Togolese people are for presidential term limit. They are also calling for nothing big to resign and and also for the ruling family to 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 stop controlling the the togo togo's economy so what the un envoy says is really these demands are legitimate they're not asking for something that is not you know that, that cannot be achieved these are just genuine demand of the togolese people who for the last 50 years have had to suffer under draconian rule of the nothing bay uh, dynasty and francois has the family overstayed its welcome um well yes as we can see from the from the people who turned out in the streets um they have overstayed their welcome um, I would qualify what Agnes just said and, and think that um, what Ibn Shambas may have meant by legitimate demands, I don't think he included um, Nasme actually resigning, um, but the, definitely uh, that, that he should leave at the end of his current term, which ends in 2020, uh, and that term limits ought to be reinstated as per the uh, 1992 constitution. Um, the most explicit demand of the protesters is that that constitution be brought back. Okay. You're on the opposition side here, Walali. You are against the president. You want change in Togo. The government says we are a democracy, that term limits or the lack of term limits is constitutional because it was passed by the parliament. So what's all the fuss about? What do you say to that, Walali? Well, uh, there is no fuss. It's really about justice and freedom and uh, the rule of law. Uh, that constitution, in 1992 was voted by the people of Togo. The people of Togo never give 
give mandate to anyone else to change the constitution. The ruling party did unilaterally change the constitution in 2002 to allow one individual, the father of Fornia Singbe, to run for another term. So what we are asking now is a return back to that constitution that was illegally changed so that we reinstate term limits and then we do reinstate a two-round election system. So what we are also saying is not about for Nyasingbe resigning, but according to that constitution, he will have exhausted two of his terms. And if the constitution was to take effect immediately, for Nyasingbe must step down immediately for new election uh, for Togo. Well, Ali, the government passed a draft bill to modify Article 59 of the constitution. So they're saying they're addressing the concerns of the protesters, including the reintroduction of term limits. And of course, Parliament holding an extraordinary session to examine the bill. Isn't that good enough for you, the fact that they're actually looking at this and they're listening to those thousands of people who are out on the streets? No, it's not good enough because Fornia Singbe have had 12 years to listen to the people of Togo. Fornia Singbe, we have to remind everyone, signed a comprehensive political agreement with uh, the major opposition party. 11 years ago, in order to put in place the same measures that we are out on the streets asking for now. So we have a problem of credibility. We have an issue with uh, trustworthiness. And as I can tell you, as of today, they have not even started debating the bill as of yet. What we know is that it took them 30 minutes to change the constitution. It took them a few minutes to change it again in 2005 to allow for Nyasingbe to be imposed as president. It should not be taking them a long debate in order to change the constitution back to its original version. So what we are saying is that those are dilatory practices that we are used to. The father have used it. The son have used it many, many times. And after 11 years, we are fed up and we are asking for the reinstatement of the constitution now. Agnes, what do you make of how the government has responded to the protest? Because they have rounded up tens of opposition politicians and protesters as well. Have they been heavy-handed, Agnes? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, they've learned from the lessons of two, 2005, where there were fatalities of uh, 500 people died. I, and, and that is not to give credit to the police force, but, but certainly I think the people of Togo have been very patient. Um, and I think it's important that they continue to protest, but protest peacefully, and for them to achieve results. And I think it's important that they are innovative and creative, that they're not just calling. This, in, in, in 2005, it was about a constitution and term limit. I think the opposition needs to come out united and be very clear that this is what we will offer the people of Togo, not just, you know, I think, I think the demand for the opposition, and I'm not saying it's not right, they have every right to demand for a new constitution they need to be a little bit more innovative and 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 really look at what are the needs of the togolese people why do we why do we insist on term limit if the next president will be the same as as as, as the current one has been why should there be term limit if you're not offering and 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 quoting uh former president of Bassanjo's that you know if you're not going to offer the people of togo new things Okay, well, Ali, is any of that fair? I, I think it's fair. And the opposition have been very creative and very innovative. No one has seen the Togolese opposition as united as it has been since 1990, when we first rose against the father, Nyasingbe Eyadema. Now, that, that unity led us to actually have that constitution, that 1992 constitution. And uh, the same opposition is truly united as of now. We have a clear statement, a clear platform. We have innovative processes. And uh, as I say, the Constitution itself imposes for Fornia Singbe to resign immediately. Uh, it will take effect immediately. When we have the president of the Constitutional Court actually leading a, a protest against the opposition, it shows you how fair this regime is. And uh, uh, basically, it's very simple. Give us our constitution back, give us our country back, and 50 years of rule is enough. Francois, how much well, have we... Oh, okay, 
you want to respond, Agnes, before yeah. I bring in Francois? Come yeah, in, Agnes. Sure. Come in. Yeah, well, I, I commend the fact that, that, uh, that you've been patient and united, and, and you're absolutely right that learning from other African nations, that it can be done. And the only way that it can be done is the opposition parties, because um, the, the president has in the past and the government have been in the past been, I mean, they easily buy off opposition. I mean, the people of Togo have been driven to poverty, that it only need a little bit of money for the opposition to give up the plight of the people and join the government. So my question is, are you, are you confident that some of your members will not will not be bribed into joining the government and then you're, you're, you're not united and you're not able to achieve your aspiration for getting your country back? Well, Ali? Yes, certainly. The question of unity is no longer an issue. I know there has been uh, some, some disagreement in the past, but right now the opposition is as united as ever. Now, the other thing also to keep in mind is that we have a new breed of young people, dynamic people, that stayed abroad, that are part of the Togolese diaspora, that are putting pressure on these people. Now, it won't take one person switching sides, as we've seen in the past, to change the odds. That's why we have brought the power to the people, brought it to the streets, and so that not only we have to hold Fonya Singbe and his government accountable, but the people of Togo is also holding those politicians accountable. Francois, let me ask you, broadly speaking, because Agnes had mentioned about, you know, looking at the example of other countries, how much of an impact has it had on the Togolese people and the general mood and trend on the continent that Yahya Jame in Gambia stepped down when it was his time to step down and he shuffled off? Tell me how, how much of an impact that has had on yes. this and the entire continent moving forward. Um, yes, so, well, I mean, there are several examples that I think are, are relevant that will be in the minds of the Togolese people. Um, and the two that I'd especially think we can contrast are uh, Burkina Faso and Senegal. Um, and whether we go, whether it looks more like one or the other will depend a lot on what uh, Mr. Nassimbe tries to do this week. Um, I, think, I think we can bet that he won't be in power after 2020, um, but what he, what he does this week will depend will determine whether the opposition remains united enough to get him out before then, or whether he'll be able to, uh, you know, as Abdullah Awad was able to um, convince people that he is going to leave when the next election is, is held. Um, and at that point, if that happens, if he can convince people that this is his final term, and this time he really means it, uh, then I think you'll see a cooling of, of protest energies as, as the whole political class starts to look towards 2020. Agnes, is it becoming harder on the continent to, to be a president for life? It is. Suddenly, we have seen a new breed of young people the, the access to information. Young people have access to information and they know if it can be done in Burkina Faso, so it can be done in Togo. And, and I tell you that politicians now are very wary and, and they know for them to be able to retain power across the continent, you must be able to show that your leadership has had an impact on the people. You know, I, 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 an example of what Togo has done under, under President uh, Nassimbe is try to, to, to improve business relations um, and, and, and promote Togo as an investment destination. But I think that must trickle down to the people of Togo for it to have an impact. And you're absolutely right that, that it's Africa of today is not Africa we used to um, decades ago. We have changed and, and, and our young people are demanding change. So politicians' time is, is, is numbered. Well, Ali, if President Fong Nassim Bey is actually watching this program, what's your message to him? It's time to leave, sir. You were never elected democratically. You impose, and we have tolerated your regime for 12 years. Now the people are demanding that you leave, like, just like they did in 2005, and you sat on the throne, walking over dead bodies. And this time, we are not going to back away your tanks are not going to scare us. We are going to be disciplined. We have had time to learn, and you will leave, and 50 years is enough. Francois, how important is Togolese stability to the entire region? Um, it's, well, very important. I mean, the, the, the regional bodies always value stability, um, and that's why I think at the moment they, they're putting a lot of pressure on, on the president to 
listen, as we've seen with with uh, Mohammed Imran Shamas's comments, um, to to listen to to protesters and to prepare for an exit. Um, yeah, so stability is is uh, is very important, uh, and they certainly don't want to see it turn into a overt conflict. Agnes, are you confident this is going to turn out well? Um, I'm not. I'm fairly optimistic, uh, but based on the fact that we've seen protests in Togo over and over again, I am a little bit pessimistic, wondering what is this sustainable and is this strong enough? But I'm very hopeful. I mean, I wish them very well and, and, and just really recommend them that work together, unite and give Togo, give the people of Togo what they deserve. That is leadership and guidance. Okay. Walali Ahlija, Agnes Gitao and Francois Conradi. It's been great to talk to all three of you. Thank you very much for joining us on The Newsmakers.